Well, experts call this the future of money, and they believe these new digital currencies will eventually replace cash. But as Dale Hurd reports, China's new system also has a dark side. China has begun trials of a new digital yuan, with the aim of becoming the first country in the world to offer a sovereign digital currency. This video explains it. Unlike most other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, which work outside the control of a central authority, the digital yuan will be the world's first that is state-owned, issued by the central bank. You can use digital yuan anywhere, since it works exactly like cash, except it's on your phone. And it will be an international currency. And it will be an international currency. Many in the financial world are looking forward to using a digital yuan in global trading. So that is a new stage of the global trading settlement system. I, I, hope, I believe the potential of that is going to be enormous. Chinese officials say their new digital economy needs digital money. But it's already being seen as yet another way the Chinese government will be able to track its citizens. Unlike cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin that offer anonymity, the Chinese central bank will be able to monitor every transaction of the digital yuan. The Chinese central bank will be able to monitor every transaction of the digital yuan. This in a country where citizens are already being monitored by hundreds of millions of facial recognition cameras and are given a social credit score and rewarded or punished according to their scores. China is building what I think is a blueprint, a roadmap of persecution for other regimes around the world, and they're doing it with surveillance. The new digital yuan is being sold to the Chinese public as convenient. But China expert Stephen Mosier, author of Bully of Asia, isn't buying it. This is just another tool uh, in the toolbox of the Chinese Communist Party. It's a way of raising the uh, high-tech prison walls a little higher on the Chinese people. China will not only know where they go and who they talk to, they will know every penny that they spend. And China is not alone. At least 12 nations are reportedly going into or are considering central bank digital currencies. At least 12 nations are reportedly going into or are considering central bank digital currencies. Because physical money is largely untraceable, it's been called the last bastion of privacy. And that's probably a big reason the Chinese government wants to get rid of it. The most cutting-edge thing about Hannes Hörblad isn't the phone in his hand, it's the microchip actually in his hand. The tiny implant is the latest advance in a biohacking technology that is steadily becoming a part of normal life in Sweden. We have created a new implant which is not a chip, it's a full device where you can add different lights, different uh, vibration different functions. Sweden is a very tech literate society and I think this is the main explanation really why a lot of Swedes are uh, adopting chip implants. Swedes haven't been shy about upgrading themselves with the new version. Thousands already have microchip implants that they use in their daily lives. Waving their hand to gain entrance to the gym, confirm their ID or make payments. A short moment of pain not putting them off becoming part Swede part machine. This event is an implant party, simply where ordinary people can show up and get a microchip embedded under their skin. The biohacking movement in Sweden is hosting them all over Europe, but it's at home where they get the most willing recipients. I think it's really cool. You don't have to carry any keys or anything. It's just your body. In maybe 10 years, everything will be in your hand. In Sweden more than anywhere else, the future is already here. The national train company Essier has around 2,600 people signed up to use microchips instead of train tickets. Did you see that? And no need to mind the generation gap. 18-year-old Felicia and father Magnus still bear the scars of their new implants. Student Hannah Herving is also freshly chipped and now just needs to program it to open doors. Although, importantly for a future career, it does already connect to her LinkedIn. Some people say I'm mad that, um, I don't know if it's safe and all that, 
but people have been putting these chips into animals for 20 years, so I'm not worried about that. The long-term goal is for the new chips to help provide medical care in remote communities. They're already getting under the skin of the Swedes and may soon become just another normal part of modern life and of the human body. Paul Rees, Al Jazeera, Lund, Sweden. Davis Credit Union took a poll of over 2,000 Americans if they carry paper money or use a card. Researchers say the majority of Americans, especially younger adults, want to move to a cashless society. The survey found more people are carrying less paper money during the pandemic. It revealed 58% of Americans plan to stop using cash entirely after the pandemic is over. Researchers say nearly two in three Americans use digital payment platforms like Venmo or Zelle. Turns out the biggest reason people carry cash is for smaller purchases or emergencies. Also, many stores are turning cashless. The most common customers at these stores are millennials, followed by Gen X. The survey revealed about 58% of Americans believe the country should move to a cashless system. Convenience is one of the biggest reasons Americans are opting to pay by card. While it's still unknown how long COVID-19 can live on the surface of paper money, the survey finds health and hygiene concerns are the reasons many Americans are avoiding cash. Do you run an unattended self-service laundromat? Integrate Nyax's cashless payment solution into your laundromat for the ultimate in ease and convenience for you and your customers. Nyax is a complete payment solution with telemetry and a back-end management suite. Receive text alerts if machines stop working. Minimize vandalism and theft. Easily set up multiple pricing configurations. Nyax can be installed on a pay station, stacks, or individual machines. Choose the configuration right for you. More and more customers want to pay via cashless. Don't miss out. Well, if you've driven on the thruway lately, you've probably noticed all of the work happening near the toll barriers and signs warning drivers that cashless tolling is coming soon. Well, guess what? It's happening next month. Here's two on your side, Dave McKinley. I think as we as we move forward and we see what technology is available, uh, it, it makes sense. And it's coming earlier than previously thought. Since the Thruway Authority first announced it would spend $355 million to make the entire length of the state superhighway cashless, it had been saying that the job would be done by the end of this year. But now we're hearing it'll be done in November, with a precise date perhaps to be announced this week. This also means if you've been putting off getting an easy pass, you might want to do so to avoid being billed by mail. In parts of the thruway, which are already cashless, the bill by mail system has had some quirks, with numerous complaints from folks getting bills for hundreds or even thousands of dollars and not getting the bill in time to avoid incurring fines for non payment. On top of that, the thruway is proposing that toll by mail customers pay 30% more than the rate for Easy Pass holders, plus a $2 administrative surcharge per billing statement. When the system does go cashless next month as well, nearly 1,000 full and part-time toll collectors will lose those jobs. It does create some pain for some people in the transition, but I think ultimately it's the way to go. But even after they make that switch to cashless tolls in November, the day when you'll be able to zip through areas like this unencumbered may be a while off. You see, the Thruway Authority still has to then remove toll plazas like this one at Williamsville. There are 54 of those across the length of the state superhighway, and it says that it may take until the end of 2021. This is Dabu 7. We have a new study here showing that the airlines and many other areas here in terms of travel are going to take a hit as people are saying that they're not expected to return to their old travel habits in some time, if ever. Now, I talked about how Klaus Schwab writes in his new book that throughout this great reset, he expects we will never 
go back to the way of old, and he says that rolling lockdowns will continue and that people will have to wear their masks and get used to it. With all of that said, the airlines have taken a stance to where if people had refused to wear their face masks, they were kicking them off and in some instances banning them for travel. Sometimes lifetime bans already. So that right there changes how someone's going to get around. Now they're talking that you're going to have to prove in different areas that you have either had your COVID vaccine or that you test negative. This talk has been discussed from places like Ticketmaster all the way to the UK where they're saying that people should be wearing white wristbands that show that they're negative. And that also matches what was in that trailer for Songbird, where the guy raises his wrist up and says, I'm immune, and all that. 2023. Well, did you forget about the essential drivers? Because I didn't. They seem to be in a phase here where everything is getting locked back down. And I would expect going into, as Biden put it, the dark winter, that you can expect to see things clamp down even harder. 